What's up, peeps? My name's Ian. I sell books on eBay. I already made a video today, but for some reason, it hasn't saved. Don't know what's going on. Really quite annoyed. Anyway, I was just talking all the usual mints, uh, going through the orders that went out over the weekend, which was an average weekend. A couple of slow days, one all rightish day, so absolutely nothing brilliant. But part of that was I've got six books, right? in my to be read pile, I've got more than that in my to be read pile, but I've got six books and I want to read one of them next and I have no idea which one. So I'm going to show you them in a little bit and you can help me decide. There's reasons each of them are, are there waiting to be read over the several dozen others that I've got stacked up. But before that, after doing the video this morning, out at the post office, out dropping off my parcels and I went, I did a wee bit of a pick up, I got a haul a haul, uh, 150, 160 books in total. I thought I'd just show you a few of the bits and pieces that I pick up on a typical pick-up day. Not massive um, place to go. Sometimes I can walk away with 300, other times 50. So, you know, an average day to day. But a reasonable wee mix and a few bits and pieces that are selling really well at the moment. So I've picked up some more of those that I would usually ignore. And one strange surprise in amongst it all so we'll get to that as well anyway first up let's go through some of the books that we picked up today i've got a load that have already been listed and put away that were just kind of single bog standard nothing spectaculars but on the table in front of me i've piled up all the books that i've currently got in different bundles that i'm going to be adding to those listings to improve that and that was one of the things I was talking about in the video earlier on. Bundles. So, we got a Lisa Jewel. Can I beat a Lisa Jewel? We got a Denise Mina. 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 Can I beat a Denise Mina? Mina. A Baldacci. Now, these are all authors where I like to pick up lots of them at once. Picking up one. It's, it's almost a pain going into the listing to do it, but I've got to keep these listings topped up so that they will uh, keep adding on. David Williams, I've sold three shelves I've had of the David Williams books, and I've sold two of them. So I'm really running out, so we managed to get a couple today. We've got The Midnight Gang. we got Billionaire Boy. Codename Bananas. And a wee gangster granny. So David Williams sells really well, really regularly. So I like to keep them topped up. We got a small stack of Bryson. Again, Bryson sells reasonably well. And a very small stack of John Grisham. I'm nearly out of Grisham books. I really need to find someone with loads of them. So that's the kind of gist of what I was picking up today. Just these main authors that go all the time. We've got Dean Kuntz, we've got Nora Roberts. Leanne Moriarty, we've got a couple of Stephen King, a couple of Terry Brooks, some Michael Morpurgo, uh, some Dav Pilkey, sold a big bundle of them at the weekend. We've got the new Wimpy Kid, uh, Diaper Overload, and another awesome friendly spooky stories with actually Lee Jefferson stuff. A wee Pullman, Patterson, McDermott, Vince Flynn, a James Herbert. Karen Slaughter, Robert Harris, Bernard Cornwall, Jenny Colgan, Marion Keyes, Santa Montefiore. And these are the ones I'm going to move to the side. That's heavy. Some Rankin, Dorothy Coomson, Manco, Bernard Knight, Lindsay Davis. Uh, but Julia Donaldson. I didn't bother with kids' books for a long, long while. And then I made up a, a bundle of Julia Donaldson. Here's all your Julia Donaldson books. Come buy them. So they're all three, four quid each. And they sell in bundles of five and ten. No problem at all. Letting people build their own bundles. Not me telling them what to get. So the... I've got a stack of the board books, which do very well. And a smaller stack of the kind of large size books of Julia Donaldson. So I'm going to get them listed and up. 
and see if we can get something out of those. So that takes me to what I was talking about in the video I made earlier on, which has vanished. Gone completely. Yeah, I got asked a question over the weekend. It's in comments in one of the videos. About do I put together bundles of books by a particular author and sell them that way? It's obviously when it's one postage cost and somebody gets a good deal on them. And the answer is no, I don't. I used to. And we'll use the big JP as the example. I'd, I went in and I picked up, what well, was 20 or 30 James Patterson hardcovers. The same volume again in paperback. So I got them home and I made them into bundles of fours and fives and threes. Thinking, right, okay, let's try the different variations and the volumes of books to see what people will buy. And I kind of tried to put them together. So Alex Cross books, uh, Women's Murder Club, you know, just built them together so they were in sets. The private series, the, yeah, there's too many series, aren't there? Uh, and they sat for ages. I mean, donkeys and one sold in about three months. I thought, ooh, that's not working. So, I thought, right, James Patterson books sell a lot on eBay. You go in and you check the daily sales and, you know, hundreds are selling all the time. So I thought, right, what am I missing? My prices were good. They were competitive. It was obviously cheaper than buying them individually from the big seller, even though I was charging postage. So I took them all and I put them in one big listing. So I listed... A must have been round about 80 books initially in one listing using the variations and they started selling almost straight away you know a couple of days whilst ebay got used to the listing and then they started pinging out the door and people would buy three at a time they would buy five at a time they would buy ten at a time and that has just kept going ever since then it's the sales have improved on that listing because now if i put up five james patterson books and Half a dozen people look at it and then somebody buys them. Listing's gone. If I put up 100 James Patterson books and say, right, see if you buy three, I'll give you two for free. So £3 each for the books, plus three quid postage. So they're paying roughly £12 for five books, which is still competitive compared to the big sellers. Not giving them away, but it's still competitive. Um, but here's 100 books for you to choose from. So you decide which five you want, which three you want. And that's that's what seems to work. That listing sits there, so instead of it having six or eight views, it's got 500 a month plus views on that listing. So it has a history, and eBay recognised that if we send people to this listing, they're likely to buy something. It's got a really high sell-through rate, because one person goes in, but they buy five. So that you know massively inflates the sell-through rate. So it's a listing that eBay want to send people to. People will watch that, and they'll be fans of James Patterson who will, you know, whenever that gets updated, which can be two or three times a week as I get new titles in, then they say, oh, that list has changed. Let's go in and see what new is there. And I get quite a few repeat buyers on not just that listing, but on all the listings that I do that way. The ones where I have 30, 40 plus books do the best because people can go in and really choose. Where I've got five or six by the one author. So I'm just looking there to see if I had an example. But Nora Roberts, I've got hundreds. Philip Pullman, I've got dozens. Stephen King, I've only ever got a few because they sell so fast. He's an exception. Um, yeah, there's only a few. They tend not to sell quite as quickly because you need to kind of hit a critical mass point and then somebody can go in and go, oh, I can choose five from that eight, ten, twelve, whatever it might be. It's not often that you've got five books and somebody will go in and choose all five of those. Although it, it has happened with a couple of authors. Um, and then I've ended up with none left. Kate Ellis. She's one of those. And you've got to run through them again. So I don't put together bundles of books for people to buy based on I think they would like these five books in a bundle. The only exception to that is if it's a kind of finite series. So Fifty Shades of Grey, there's a good example. Mm. Fifty Shades, Darker and Freed. Yeah, whatever they are. So that's a trilogy. I know there's other books that uh, Yale James has written around about that but that's a kind of fixed trilogy so I'll put them together and say look if somebody wants all three they're there to buy but there's a caveat or two with that one they have to be in really good condition because if somebody's buying a complete set it's more likely that they're buying not just to read but for the bookshelf 
to display or as a gift. So they have to be in really good condition from that point of view. If there's a series of five or six books, then, or, you know, an even greater series than that, trying to guess which of those ones to bulk together doesn't seem to work. People, let's use James Patterson again as an example, if they've got the first two or three books in a series, then they're going to be out looking for more with the same characters. In fact, Lee Child, perfect example. When you put The Killing Floor together with the next four or five books, it never sells. People will buy The Killing Floor because they've read later books, and they will buy later books because they've read The Killing Floor, but it doesn't seem to work if you sell the first five together. So people may have one or two of those. So let people choose their own. Um, if somebody is looking for a set of books, chances are they've read one of them, and that's why they're looking for more to read. And it might be the first one they've read, it might be the third one they've read. You don't know. But it's unlikely that somebody's going to go and buy books one to six when they've already read books one and two. So let them choose. And that's how you should build your listings with the variations, which I spoke about in the last couple of videos. Anyway, let's go on with a bit more of the haul. Whenever I go out and buy a load of stuff, it's nice if there's one or two books that will actually pay for the whole thing. And that's nearly always the case. If you get 100 books plus and there's certain book types that I'll pick up, even though I don't know the books. Um, and one of those book types is education. Educational books, grab them. They might be worth two or three quid, but there's a higher chance that they're actually going to be worth more than that. Uh, a lot of these, I don't know if this one's got a cover price on it. No, this one doesn't have a cover price on it. But if somebody's going to college or uni, any further education, they get given their book list and it could be 30, 40, 50 pounds to buy these books new. So care in practice, fourth edition. Um, this is higher grade actually, so it's not even going into like university level or anything, but Nat 5, Nat 4, SVQs, HNCs, so that's college level. 30 quid used. Not bad. It's in quite good night. I think I've listed it for about 25 just to see if I can get it sold, because obviously I've got postage as well. But that's that was the first one that was the nice wee pick up for that one. And then, this behemoth, nursing practice. So, fundamentals of holistic care. So another one, which probably doesn't have a cover price, although typically 40, 50 quid to buy it new, and selling anywhere from 15 to 30 used. So I've stuck it on for, I think, about 18 pounds. And this these typically sell quite well. I've had a big chemistry book, which if tomorrow's video works, you'll see it then. Um, biochemistry, something like that. Again, a university text uh, It's sold for about 20 quid today. Cost me 25p to buy, because that's what I pay for my books. So that kind of book, when I'm doing a big pickup, if I see a bunch of educational books, I'll grab them. And that could be, you know, past paper books for kids that are still at school, it could be university texts, it could be old educational texts, anything like that at all. I'll pick them up when they're only costing me pennies and at the very worst they're going to be worth you know three or four pounds but quite often you'll find one that's worth a bit more than that. And we're not talking stupid money but 15, 20, 30 pounds. If you today pick up 53 pound in total I spent on all of the pickups I did so those two books there are a chunk of the way towards actually covering that whole cost. And there's a few other similar titles to that that I got that are worth a bit less, but still £5 to £10. So I'm making good profit in all of those. And when they sell, that's it. Everything else that I picked up today is paid for. Right. There were a couple of other reasonable books. Nothing crazy, a couple of reasonable ones. But in the back of something... I can't even remember which book it was. I think it was in the back of The Adventures of Ook and Gluck, Kung Fu Cavemen from the Future by Dav Pilkey, which is actually not a bad wee title itself if you can pick it up. In good condition, you can sell that for six, seven pounds for some reason. The one I got is not in great condition. But somebody had been using a Pokemon card as a bookmark. So I thought, oh, that's funny. So just out of curiosity, because it's Charizard. Even I've heard of him. So I just look it up. People people have got these listed. 
for up to £300 at the moment. <laughs> Somebody's been using it as a bookmark. Obviously, the ones that are listed for like money are in much better condition. You know, they've all been graded and they're near mint. This thing, I think even saying that it's a poor, well-played condition, it's been a bit generous. It is chewed and done. But I'm taking it as a freebie. I've stuck it on as an auction starting at 99p. Maybe somebody would just want the card until they can get a condition upgrade and they'll pay a pound for it. Who knows? Maybe somebody's really stupid and has more money than sense and will pay £100 for it. Highly unlikely. So that was the wee, the wee bonus. You never know what you find when you're buying books. There's always things inside them. So yeah, there's the, the wee extra on that one. Right. That's the haul. See, I've got, I've got lots of other books. I'm, they're not particularly interesting, so I'm not going to show them all to you. Um, although I did get some Raymond E. F Feist? 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 I don't know. I've been picking up loads of fantasy and sci-fi books lately. I don't know why. Not just because I'm seeing them. Right. To be read. My to be read list. Pile, stack, shelf. Five books. So, let's drag them over here and explain what I'm doing. Right. I've been procrastinating all weekend about what to pick up next and get to find another things to do. So option one is Finders Keepers by Stephen King, which is part of the kind of Mr. Mercedes Outsider series. It's all in those. However, I had some Tesco vouchers to spend something out and I grabbed a copy of Holly. I wouldn't usually buy things that soon, but buying it early, you get a first edition, first print. So that's quite nice. But it's the same characters as Finder Keepers, but later in the series. Now, I've read other books in the series which come after Finder's Keepers, but I can't decide whether I should just read that one first or just get stuck into the new book. It's a new Stephen King book. It's difficult not to. I can't decide. And then, I've been watching a few videos on, you know, like booktube videos. Uh, just to get a sense of what's popular titles that I've never heard of. And Dan Simmons was getting a lot of mentions for Hyperion. So sci-fi book, and I thought, oh, I want to read that. Haven't got it, can't find it. But when I searched my listings, I discovered I do have two Dan Simmons books. So I pulled them out as well and wondering whether I should read them. So the first one is The Fifth Heart, which seems to be a kind of Sherlock Holmes Redo. So, Sherlock Holmes, Henry James, The Mystery of the Century. So, they're going to America to investigate the suicide of Clover Adams, wife of the esteemed historian Henry Adams. I don't know. Obviously, it's not sci fi, but Stephen King says he's in awe of Dan Simmons, so that's something. So, that's a kind of historical thriller which could go on the list. And the other Dan Simmons is. Fires of Eden, which appears to be much more of a horror. Um, I am an old Dan Simmons, says Stephen King again. So there's those two that are potential. Now, on those vids that I've been watching, I've also been catching up on a, not catching up, taking note of the other biggies that people are talking about. Now, The Wheel of Time, I saw it coming up on Amazon. I think I watched the first 15 minutes of the first episode of the first season, and it was shit. So I turned it off, and I didn't give it any other thought. But I know these books sell quite well, and I pick them up and sell them because they're on Amazon, basically. But Robert Jordan, The Wheel of Time, there's 14 or 15 books in the series in total. This is the first one, The Eye of the World. I get put off because it's now an original series on Amazon. But... People are raving about these. Saying, oh, it's the new Tolkien, it's the new Lord of the Rings. I didn't like Lord of the Rings. I thought it was a bit crap. But I did like The Hobbit. So, I don't know whether or not to get started in these and see if they're any good. I miss Game of Thrones. George Martin, he needs to get the new book out soon, please. I'm getting old. He's getting old. It's going to happen. But 15 books, and if they're all like that, that's a lot of reading. And if they're good, that's phenomenal. If they're not good, then I'll maybe waste about that much of my time. I don't know. But that's another potential to get started on. And the last one, again, off of those lists, is Adrian Tchaikovsky, Children of Time. 
So this keeps appearing really high up in all the, the best sci-fi books, best sci-fi fantasy book type review things that people do. It keeps finishing up there pretty damn high. So I thought, mm, not a mad sci-fi fan. Ian M. Banks, culture books, I read all of them a lot of years ago. Mm, really enjoyed them. But that's because I liked Ian Banks, The Wasp Factory, The Bridge, etc., etc. Recently I read Dune, which, considering it was written in like 1955, it could have been written a fortnight ago. It was brilliant, really well written. That makes a difference with all of these things. So if one of these types of books is really well written, then it doesn't matter if it's a kind of genre that I'm not the biggest fan of, because I could become it because it's that. He don't like fantasy books. George Martin. Oh, Game of Thrones. Mm -hmm. Oh, so good, so good. Um, so yeah, that's the other option. So the options are Adrian Tchaikovsky, Children of Time, Robert Jordan, The Eye of the World, Dan Simmons, Fires of Eden, Dan Simmons, The Fifth Heart, Stephen King, Finders Keepers, or Stephen King, Holly. You choose. I know there's only like five people watch these videos, but somebody decide for me. I can't do it myself. So, this will be uploaded this evening. Somebody go on, tell me which one to read and why. Give me a reason why. So that I can't go, well, maybe, maybe. Tell me why I should read it. Say, read that and read it because you bam. You don't have to say you bam, but you can. Um, and I'll grab that book and I'll read it first. And be careful, because if you watch any of these videos in the future, I am going to tell you about it. I want no, no spoilers, nothing like that. But I'm going to tell you what I think about it. So be careful what you wish for. Okay, that's all. Second video of the day. Hopefully this one will actually save and you'll all get to see it because I'm not going to sit and talk through all of this again. Do my nut, man. Have a lovely evening. Enjoy the rest of the week. Live free. Be happy. Love you. Bye.